Hi, this is Ali from the BSID, and in this video I'd like to demonstrate taking impressions in the analog way. So if you come here and you get a little bit closer, you'll notice that we have a lower right six implant placed and with a five by five healing abutment. So what I'm going to do is to replace the healing abutment with a, an impression pickup. Now, impression pickups can be referred to as transfers or as pickups. And different companies give them different names. The point is, the more important aspect is whether they are open tray or closed tray. So are they picking up the position of the, uh, the implant or transferring the position of the implant? Uh, these terms are interchangeable and very confusing. However, the point is that whether they're open tray or closed tray. Now, overall, generally speaking, everybody prefers open tray. What I'm demonstrating here first is closed tray. So a closed tray transfer or coping or pickup looks a little bit like this. And in every system, that it has similarities. The point is that it usually has a dome-shaped top, um, some notches for engagement, usually some kind of cross section that allows it to not move in the impression and I'll demonstrate that why. And I'll demonstrate why that is uh, in a minute. You'll notice here there's a little line on this one and this line is very significant and I will demonstrate the importance of that line shortly. So this is the the Ostem uh, implant system again so here's to demonstrate. So in the mouth you would insert this into the implant. Obviously, that requires a little bit of nudging past soft tissue. You then twist the top bit a little bit and tighten it like this. Now, the reason this is a closed tray, it's referred to as a closed tray impression, is that you do not need to make a hole in the top of the tray. You merely take an impression as is, over the top, like so. When the impression is taken, the tray is removed with the impression material in it and the pickups taken out and inserted into its position in the tray and we will demonstrate that in just a second. So the most favoured material for implant impressions using the analogue method is polyether materials similar to Impregum, Impregum or similar. However, in common practice, um, silicon materials or uh, PVS materials or VPS materials are also commonly used, the error level being very, very low. We're going to mix here some um, silicon material for ease. However, we do commonly and frequently use um, Impregum polyether material. So here we're doing a closed tray impression. You'll notice that no hole has been made in my tray. Nothing beyond a normal standard crown and bridge impression is being done here. I'm mixing myself because my assistant is videoing and a little bit of light body material just around the edge, minimizing as much as possible, not using a lugubrious amount because again, rigidity is the key. And then over the top like so. Once the material has set, you merely remove the tray from the mouth as you would do a normal crown and bridge impression, and this is sort of the result that you'd get. Then you remove the, the closed tray impression transfer or coping from the mouth, and then in theory, the correct way to do this is to get an implant analog, which is a replica of an implant, and to insert the transfer or coping or pickup into the analog and screw it down firmly. Having done this, you then insert this into the impression, and in the impression there are flats. It shows you the, the shape the reverse shape of the, the pickup so that you can then insert it in. And then you'll find that it just 
clicks in nicely into position and will not move. Now because it's so nice and rigid, you can then put some cotton around it, something to support it so there's no movement, and then you package this and send it to your technician. The idea being that the clinician is responsible for the insertion and placement of the analog. However, in real life what we normally do is we um, send this to our technicians and they get their own analogs, they attach them. The line on the transfer here indicates the position that the replica should be in, in the analog. So if it's like this, and if you've tied it on, you know that it's not right until it's fully, the line is fully level with the shoulder of the replica. Such is the case with all the implants as well, in the range of 4, 4.5 and 5 in the OSTEM system. But again, every different implant system has a different slightly different way of doing things. In this system, again, that line is very important. Here we can see it just there, and this is with the different type of impression pickup, which I shall demonstrate in a second. So, again, just very quickly, we'll put this back together to show you what the closed tray impression would look like. As you can see, the tray is closed, as is, no change. And this is attached to an implant replica or an analog and then inserted all in one piece into the impression, making sure that it doesn't rotate. That's your closed tray. Now for an open tray, we use an open tray pickup or transfer or whatever the company would like to call it. Now the difference with this is that it has a, a screw in the top which protrudes through the impression tray. The idea is that you've got longer and more rigid engagement into the, into the impression, and once it's in the impression, it won't come out of the impression. So once it's in, it doesn't come out. So again, we insert the, the pickup or the transfer into our implant. It is possible, if you wish, to take an x-ray to verify that the, that the pickup is fully inserted into the implant. But with these pickups, they do have hexes, and then when you insert them into the implant, the implant will then engage, and you can feel with your fingers. Now, in real life, soft tissue, possibly even bone, will often get in the way. So it is necessary to nudge these in, possibly under local anesthetic, sometimes under local anesthetic, and to ensure that they are fully inserted. You can also take an x-ray to verify this. And then light finger pressure to tighten it on. Now in the back of the mouth, in a real person, this may be quite a distance, this may be quite big, which is why most implant companies provide a shorter version of these pickups, such as this one. They also come in different widths, so depending on how if you're doing a molar or a premolar, how wide you want the uh, gingival sulcus to look. Uh, in the impression, you can choose very, very wide ones or very narrow ones. This is a short five millimeter, so it's an 11 millimeter height by five millimeter diameter pickup. This will work a treat. So then you get your tray and with this, we tend to, we like to mark the spot where we're going to make a hole. You can do this with a pen in the mouth if you wish, or you can eyeball it. You just pop your finger over the top wherever you want to make your hole. So in my case, it is about there. So we've made a, a mark. We've marked the spot on the tray where we'd like to make a hole. And then With, a, with an acrylic burr, with whatever you choose to make holes with.
Okay, and ensuring that the top of the pickup now can be seen through the impression material. Now, here's where here's the trick. You're going to have to wait until the material sets and then be able to remove this. Okay, so if that's not the case, you may want to extend this with a bit of tubing or use a longer one. I shall use a longer one. And again, what I'm doing is I'm rotating to ensure that it engages fully before I turn the screw and then tighten. And I'm only using light finger pressure to tighten just to ensure that it's fully engaged and there is no movement of the pickup. Then I test this again, ensuring that I can, we've gone back to our short pickup and you can just about get to the screw head there. It'll be, it'll be protruding through the material. So again, we're demonstrating the open tray system. We've made an opening in the tray so that we can take our impression. I'm mixing silicon impression material, but as said before, polyether materials tend to be the best because of uh, rigidity, uniform rigidity of the material, so that it keeps the any metal components, the implant components in place. However, a lot of people use silicon materials with equally good results. As we shall be demonstrating also, now that digital is taking over, a lot of this can be overcome. Now we're using a little bit of light body. We don't want to use a lot because the rigidity of the material is important, the rigidity of hold. And then we insert our impression tray. And when we do this, we make sure that you can get to the screw head and then you wait. We'd like to demonstrate the importance of the, the line on these components. So that line there to which I'm pointing is the first line, quite marked line on the component, the, the pickup or the transfer. And the way that when you insert it into say a replica, but ideally into an implant as well, that line is level with the shoulder. We'll show this shortly. Now that the material has set, we can remove anything inside the, the hex and then unscrew the screw, ensuring that it can be lifted out completely if necessary. so that it is definitely not engaging the implant. And then we lift the material out of the mouth, the tray out of the mouth. And having done so, it lifts out with the transfer of the coping inside it, like so, and somebody's tooth. Okay, so here it is fully rigid. It hasn't been removed from the tray like this one has. So with a closed tray, you have to take it out of the mouth and then you take that from the implant and insert it, trying to, trying to be sure that you've got it right. Whereas with this one, it's right from the very beginning. In theory, what um, the dentist should do is get an implant analog and attach that to the pickup. And then without twisting the impression material, just twist that back, twist the analog or tie the analog to the pickup, thereby reducing the possibility of error um, by the technician.